Good evening, and welcome to this edition of the Speakers and Leaders Hour. I'm Dave Wilkins, your host. This is the program that comes into your home once a month on the first Tuesday from 7 to 8 p.m. And we're here live in the Allen County Public Library, Access Fort Wayne. And with their facilities and all of their special equipment, we're not only here interactive, you can call us on the phone at 422-3902, and we can take your calls about Toastmasters, Parliamentary Procedure, or whatever. Uh, with me here in the, the to, tonight in the studio are three of my best friends from Toastmasters in the parliamentary world. On my far left, your right, that would be Mr. Tom Howler, and Tom is a member of the uh, Anthony Wayne Toastmasters, the Advanced Communicators. Also, he is president of the parliamentary unit here in Fort Wayne. Welcome, Tom. Thank you for being here this evening. Thank you for having me. Yes. And next to Tom is the lovely lady in green and black today. That is Marlene Purdy. Marlene is a past district governor over in Ohio, District 28. She's a double, triple DTM, quadruple. <laughs> She's got four DTMs behind her name. That's so it's like D D D D T M. I guess would be no, maybe we don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll work that out. She also has served a couple terms as division governor here in Division B in District 11, and the past Division A governor. She served over there, and we are delighted to have her in Division B and part of our group. She. She brings a wealth of knowledge, and she has a lot to say, so we appreciate that. <clears throat> and on the other side of the table is the lovely Patricia Kanabi. Patricia is a past double Division B governor. She served two terms as Division B governor, and uh, she is working. She's also a DTM, and she's working towards her uh, advanced goals and advanced communicator silver, I believe, tonight. And she is here also to be a part of our program promoting Toastmasters and Parliamentary Procedure. And as I said, I'm Dave Wilkins. I'm the host of the program, and I belong to Anthony Wayne Toastmasters, the Advanced Communicators, and the club that's meeting even as we speak, the Bearfield Toastmasters, the best club on the south side of Fort Wayne. <clears throat> anyway, we're here tonight to talk about Toastmasters and have some presentations. Uh, but I'd like to ask the group first if what they've got planned for Christmas and parties. Does anybody want to volunteer what's going on in your lives? Do Patricia, Marlene, Tom? Well, <clears throat> the day after Christmas, we'll have the extended Huntsman family over to the wife's side. Of the oh, okay. All right. Okay. There'll uh, probably be 20 people or so. Oh, my goodness. Uh, I couldn't do that many people at our house if I used the phone book. So, <laughs> uh, Marlene, what about you? What plans do you well, have? Actually, so last, this past Sunday, I hosted my Dietrich cousins. We had started a tradition that we get together the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Uh -huh. And we actually usually only leave the kitchen to have our formal pic We have pictures in there on Facebook. Mm -hmm. But we spend most of the time in the kitchen around the island eating <laughs> oh well, there you go well and, and no, gabbing and there's nothing the matter with that boy that's what it's all about okay so, so and patricia do you have any christmas plans traditions uh, events coming up actually both my husband and my family are far flung and traveling is not possible without hurting somebody's feelings so we stay at home with the two dogs and the cat Oh, well, the, oh yes, you you do have a cat now, have don't cat you? Now. Yeah, mm -hmm, yes. and so the cat has become a definite part of your family. A definite part of the family. He's getting a scratching post for Christmas. I, I remember year. that you this the cat was a temporary thing. He's not it, temporary it, anymore. It didn't work, huh? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it, you know, with a cat, it never does. Well, never I have does. a soft spot for him now, oh, and okay. despite the allergies, he's staying. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> well. My family traditions include this year going to my son's on Christmas Eve and having a small family get together there. And then I get to spend the day with my wife on Christmas Day at home and where we'll be watching all her old Christmas movies that she likes so well. So, okay. Well, Toastmasters is primarily about public speaking and then learning what we've done well and where we can improve. 
And to that end, we are going to now have a speech by, and let me see who is going to be first up here. It's going to be Patricia. <clears throat> and Patricia is speaking from the Advanced Communication Project Manual, um, working on television. And this project is instructing on the Internet. We're not quite on the Internet, but with a video camera out there and audio and technical uh, materials, we can do this. And so her speech is entitled, I like you, I respect you, I trust you. Please welcome at this time, Patricia Fernandez. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, fellow Toastmasters, Toastmasters at home, and most honored guests at home. I like you, I respect you, I trust you. Zig Ziglar said, and I quote, if people like you, they will listen to you. But if they trust you, they will do business with you. And I'm sure everybody who is in sales, either in the past or the, the present or plans on being in sales in the future, understands these words very well. We as people move through phases of putting our faith in, our, in others. And, excuse me, <laughs> I just lost my voice. <laughs> I apologize, I just swallowed wrong. <clears throat> I'm not sure that's going to help, but I'll give, <laughs> give it a shot. <coughs> I apologize for that. <clears throat> we as <clears throat> customers and consumers <clears throat> move through phases of <clears throat> how we will <clears throat> I might I might have to wait and come back up in a few That's minutes. Fine. Can That's we fine. have somebody else sure. okay. come up? <clears throat> I apologize for this. Oh, no problem. No problem. Okay. I'm going to give you control again, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That is terrific. Okay. We're going to hear more from Patricia just a little bit later on. And until then, now we're now going to go to a presentation by our own Marlene Purdy. Let me tell you a little bit about it. I mentioned a few things about Marlene, and now here's some more. She joined Toastmasters in 1988. She's done a lot in a short time. She's originally from Bowling Green, Ohio. She is the holder of four distinguished Toastmaster designations, which is really awesome. Prior to coming to Fort Wayne, she was district governor of District 28 over in Ohio, Northwest Ohio. That also included Southeast Michigan and Southwest Ontario. Man, you got around, didn't you, when you were district governor? Since she came to Fort Wayne, she served two years as Division B governor and one year as Division A governor. And she currently serves as education vice president of the Bob Lyman Toastmaster Club and treasurer of the advanced speakers and leaders. Tonight, she's speaking from the specialty speeches as one of the advanced manuals with the project of Sell a Product. And the title of her speech is Give Yourself a Gift That Keeps on Giving. Please welcome at this time, Marlene Purdy. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, both here in the studio and out in TV land, as well as all of those of you at home who are not Toastmasters. Hopefully, you'll take to heart what I'm trying to sell this evening. Black Friday is history. Cyber Monday is over, although some groups are trying to extend Cyber Monday. The shopping season is in full swing. And now it is time to give yourself a gift. My suggestion is a gift that keeps on giving, and that is join a Toastmasters club. Now, what in the heck is Toastmasters? Now, I know if you've listened to our, stu our TV show very much, you should know a little bit about Toastmasters, but just in case we have some newbies out there, it is a worldwide organization. In fact, if you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe probably the fastest growing area of Toastmasters is, is in Asia. Mm -hmm. And it's we just had our 
International Convention at Kuala Lumpur this past summer. So it is definitely a worldwide organization. I have friends from different countries. One of, in fact, when I was di district governor, the gentleman who was number three in command is now in Germany and very active in Toastmasters there. He was just awarded their outstanding Toastmaster for their district recent, at their recent convention. And so I was really proud of him because I know somebody in Germany in Toastmasters and we were very good friends when he was in the States. So it is a worldwide organization, but what is the purpose of Toastmasters? Well, hopefully those of you who join Toastmasters will <coughs> follow what it's all about, and that is to help improve your communication and leadership skills. Now, some people say it's public speaking. Well, that's part of it, but that's only a small part of it. It's not just giving speeches. The communication part is communicating, whether it be in a large group, in a small group like we have here, or just one-on-one. -on -one. And learning to do that effectively. It could be in a family setting, it could be at work. And part of Toastmasters also is the table topics, which some people call it, call it the white knuckle time, where you're given a topic and immediately respond to it so that it helps you to think on your feet, how to organize your thoughts. And especially that you would need to do if you were working in a committee group. Most of the skills we learn in Toastmasters are very, very important skills for those of you in the working world, especially in this day and age of work groups. I know a lot of companies anymore, they do not have, you do this job, you do this job, you do this job. They have work groups and they collaborate and if you cannot communicate within that group or if you are ineffective in your communication, you're going to be that person that you've heard of people complain, I bring up a point, nobody listens to me, and five minutes later somebody else brings up the exact same point and they say, oh, what a great idea. You need help in communication because obviously you're not getting your points across. So this is what the benefit of communication part of Toastmasters. And then there is the leadership portion. Now the leadership portion is a little bit different, but it goes hand in hand with the communication portion of Toastmasters, and it helps you develop those skills that you, are, that you need to be a strong leader, such as delegating, again, working as part of a team, how to be a critical thinker. Those are all part of the Toastmasters program. Now you say, well, what can it do for me? I have to share a story, and it's, it wasn't the first time it happened, but it was very, very, I guess, mind-boggling mind in a way that one of our members of our club, who the first time he came to the meeting, could not even tell us his name. He was so shy. And we watched him progress. But then we lost him as a member because he got a job promotion and was moved away. He doesn't live in Fort Wayne anymore. But he made a point, even after he started his new job, to come back to the meeting to share with us how grateful he was for what he learned in Toastmasters and the fact that he would have never had that job had it not been for the skills he developed through Toastmasters. This is what I'm talking about. Give yourself the gift that keeps on giving. Now, exactly what all is involved in Toastmasters? Well, I mentioned the communication and leadership. You have two manuals like this. And they have different covers on them, depending upon how long ago you got the manuals. But one of them is for communication, and one is for leadership. And they give projects and you work through these and they give you suggestions of how, of how to do your speeches they give suggestions of what you have to do in fact well for the leadership portion one is planning and implementation and so you actually have to plan a project or something i'm going to be planning the 
special event at my house this week for the, or next week I guess it is, for the two Toastmasters clubs that I belong to and parliamentarians. They all get together at Christmas time for a gathering at my house and that's my planning and implementing that I'm doing. But those are the two manuals and then there are whole, there are 17 actually advanced manuals and these manuals are very important especially if you're on the job. So, such as technical presentations. How many times on the job have you had to make a technical, technical presentation and you were clueless as to how to approach it? If you have this manual, you could get practice on doing technical presentations. Interpersonal communication, very important in work groups. Public relations, how many of you have jobs that PR is part of your job? Facilitating discussion, again, in work groups, speeches by management, and the entertaining speaker is just fun, and who knows, you may find out that you like to be do entertaining speeches. Now, I'm suggesting that you gift yourself with a membership, but how do you find a club here in town? First of all, go on the internet, go to toastmasters.org. And when it comes up, click on the icon that says locate a club. And that will and then they'll ask you what location you're looking for. Type in Fort Wayne and you will find the clubs in Fort Wayne. Actually, if you're out in TV land and you're not from Fort Wayne, there's also clubs up in Kendallville, I believe. And I know there are clubs in Warsaw and there is a club in Defiance, Ohio, for those of you who live across the line in Ohio. And I happen to, I forgot to mention, I also belong to that club as well. Oh. I still belong to that club because when I was in District 28, that was one of my babies. Anyway, so that's how you find a club. Well, what does it cost? Well, there's a one-time fee of $20. And the $20 gets you these two basic manuals as well as three special little handbooks on tips for adding strength and authority to your voice, your speaking voice, gestures, how to become a skilled nonverbal in nonverbal communication, and effective evaluation. And I didn't touch on that too much, but part of the Toastmasters program is each meeting, somebody, if you give a speech, somebody will be evaluating your speech. In fact, mine is being evaluated right now as I speak. And so how to do effective evaluations. These are things that come with your basic $20 fee one time. And then for Toastmasters International, it is $36 every six months for the international and any local dues. Now our club doesn't charge local dues the first time since you're paying the $20. But after that, I think we have $4 every six months. So it's $8 a year. You receive these materials that I mentioned and you have a chance to really expand your communication skills. I guess my closing remarks would be, you cannot afford to not give yourself this gift. Mr. Toastmaster. Right. That was awesome, Marvin. That truly was. That's what it's all about, folks how to improve yourself, giving yourself the gift of improvement. And it's fun. It's not a classroom. There's no pass or fail. It's always, you move forward at your own rate, at your own speed, with your own particular set of goals in mind. It's interesting how a, a diverse group of people come together with one common notion, their betterment as well as yours. And as the late Bill Cartwright used to say, where else can you go to find a group of people who are dedicated to helping you become a better person than you can by looking up a Toastmaster Club? Thanks again, Marlene. Good job. <clears throat> Our third presenter tonight is Tom Howler. He's speaking out of the Public Relations Manual. Um, this, is a, this is a gentleman who is a double DTM. He's on his way up there. He's a member of the Anthony Wayne Toastmasters. Not only that, he is the president there. 
as well as a president of the Bob, uh, the uh, parliamentary, the Bob Lyman unit of the Parliamentary Association, and also a past area governor. And uh, are you the president of the Bob Lyman Club too? No, no, not currently. Not, the, not, not currently. Okay. Tom is a busy man, <clears throat> and this speech is entitled. Stop the Madness. This is a Christmas presentation that you will not forget. Stop the Madness, Tom Haller. <clears throat> Mr. Wilkins, fellow Toastmasters, everybody out there in TV land, and especially those of you who are part of Scrooge Incorporated, you've probably heard the disaster. Disaster, I tell you, which has befallen Scrooge. He had a nightmare and he's gone all to pieces. He is giving health care to the entire families of his employees. We, we can't afford such a thing, nor, I'm telling you, will this end well. Now, Scrooge may have been a little rough around the edges, but let's examine what he does. And I am somewhat clairvoyant. I can tell you by looking into the future that he's on the wrong path. Now, people have had the false notion that he loans money for the sheer joy of foreclosing on people. Now, we know that's not true. I mean, I can tell you, if you look in the future, over to America, the new American colonies, there will come a time when they will, their banks will have loaned money to all kinds of people that couldn't pay them back. And that's not going to end well, folks. There's nothing to recommend loaning money to people that can't pay it back. Scrooge doesn't do that. He loans money to people who do pay it back. He's not a bank. He doesn't loan money to for houses anyway. What he does is loan on the secondary market. Much of what he loans out is for things related to the new steam engine. Now, you really have to understand a little bit about the importance of steam engines at this period of time. Here in the 1830s, steam engines are it. That is where the money goes. That's where the money will follow. These people who are investing in it now are making as much as 14-fold per year on this. This is a booming industry. These people do not need Scrooge as bad as he needs them. They make their payments regularly. They build their businesses. It's a booming nation because of the things that he loans for. Life gets better and better for everybody. It's hard to fully appreciate the steam engine, what it's done. Take just in farming. A person, an individual, can plow with a horse about a quarter an acre a day. Even if he's Superman and plows half acre a day, a tractor, a steam tractor, can do 20 acres a day. Think of all the people that are freed up to go out and do something more useful. I don't know how it happened that Scrooge had such a bad reputation. Do you realize that he is part of less than 10% of the English-speaking world that gives his employees Christmas Day off with pay, with pay, mind you. Beyond that, he doesn't seriously expect Bob Cratchit to come in until midday the next day, a day and a half off with pay. Who ever heard of that? That was before he had his nightmare and became confused about what was important. Now he has intentions of paying for an operation that will fix Bob Cratchit's child's limp. What do we have in the way of modern technology nowadays in the 1830s? Well, we can give people cowpox so they don't get smallpox, which is important and good, but that's about all we have. When he takes Tiny Tim under the knife, you know what there won't be. That's any anesthesia. I've looked in the future. I tell you, absolutely, there will come a time when you can put a person to sleep and they won't feel anything while this operation is going on. But right now, the only thing you could do for Tiny Tim is to give him whiskey. Now, even assuming our employer is kind enough to do this, 
Eventually, if Tiny Tim recovers at all, you will not only have the pain of the operation to deal with, but a hangover. <laughs> and in all probability, Tiny Tim will die under the knife. Mind you, the neighbors will have to come in and hold him down because he's not going to like this. Probably have to hold his mother down because she's not going to like the screaming of her child. There is nothing, nothing this doctor can do to save Tiny Tim anyway. So, if you think our employer has image problems now, wait until he's responsible for the torture death of the child. <laughs> Beyond this, does it struck anybody yet? Believe me, the media will pick up on this. It hasn't struck them yet. Our kind and generous employer who gives his employee a day and a half off has hit up a merchant making him open up on Christmas to sell him a goose. A goose. Nothing else would do. I mean, does this seem illogical to you that he gives his employee off, that he makes the merchant open up to serve him just because he's a big shot in town? I think eventually that's not going to play well at all. I submit to you the Scrooge who loaned money to people to better the world through steam engines and other such things is far more serviceable to our nation, to the human race, then will be a Scrooge who tortures children in the name of goodness because they will still be equally dead no matter how benevolent he thinks he's being. He may be a little cranky, but goodness gracious, folks, his wife walked off because his fiance walked off before she became his wife because he spent too much time in business. Did you catch on that they're complaining? that he doesn't spend enough on himself, that he lives on gruel and the cold. I'm looking forward to a time when the steam engine has made people so prosperous, so half a century or so from now, that they will have big houses, they will throw big parties, they will live the high life, and then people will complain that they're spending too much during the so-called Gilded Age of the 1980s. As I said, I can see into the future. I can tell you folks it's coming. Absolutely. There is no way to win. Perhaps these people should say exactly how much you dare spend on yourself to be politically correct. I say that we must reason with Scrooge, get him back to his old self before he completely falls apart and hinders the budding economy as well as his own image. Mr. Wilkins, take it away before I continue. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. I am glad to have had this all straightened out about uh, Mr. Scrooge, because, gee, I thought he was a nasty old guy, and here, here he was a wonderful man, and one to kill children. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> gee, many. Patricia, are you ready? I'm ready. You're ready. Okay, let me try this again. Yes. You may remember that Patricia is speaking and doing a, a video on... Uh, instructing on the internet. So we have the camera, we have the audio, and now we're going to have the video of Patricia with, I like you, I respect you, and I trust you. Patricia, come on. <laughs> thank you again, Dave, and thank you again, fellow Toastmasters. The tickle in my throat seems to have died down a little bit. Let's see if we can get through this in one piece. Again, welcome Toastmasters at home and guests at home. As I was saying, Zig Ziglar said, if people like you, they'll listen to you. But if they trust you, they'll do business with you. Like, respect, and trust. We as people move through these three phases in order to get to a place in our decision-making process as to whether or not we are going to do business with another person. And this speaks back to what Marlene Purdy was talking about earlier, <clears throat> about giving yourself the gift of Toastmasters. And I'll tie the two together here in a minute, trust me. If you look at the definition of the word like in a Webster Dictionary, dictionary.com, it means having something in common. This is one of the definitions. Having something in common. Some element of the personality draws you to that person. Whether it, you have 
politics in common or religion in common or you like the same types of music or you enjoy going to the theater or you both enjoy reading books. You have something in common that draws you into a connection with that person. Respect. Respect is elevated from like. I have friends that I like, but sometimes their actions aren't exactly exactly respectable. So do, do I respect that person even if I like them? Not necessarily. Respect means we have a sense of worth. There is an excellence of person in respect. Above respect is trust. Trust takes respect to a whole new level. It means reliance on integrity strength, ability, confidence in a person. Trust is a whole new ball game. It is like and respect magnified to the hundredth degree, if you ask me. As M Mr. Ziegler said, if we trust somebody, we will do business with that person. To trust somebody means you can look at that person, ask that person to do something for you, to help you out in some way, and if that person gives you his or her word, you know for a fact that that word is the, that person's bond and that bond will not be broken. When we talk about trust, I want to take it to a Toastmasters club level. Those of us in Toastmasters trust that the clubs that we are in are going to help us with our communication skills, help us with our leadership skills. We will build bonds within our clubs with other club members. Inside a club environment, <clears throat> I have heard people share stories that they might not necessarily share with their closest friends, but there is such a level of trust in a Toastmasters club that they feel safe doing that. And they open up their hearts and their minds through their speeches, through their activities in the club, to other club members. This is pretty powerful stuff. To be able to go into a club environment and trust that club environment so thoroughly and so completely to say to the other club members, I'm opening up my heart to you. I am going to share what is in my mind with you. You may not like it. You may not agree with it. But I trust you enough to respect my opinion as I'm going to respect your opinion. Going back to what Marlene said, Toastmasters clubs are very nurturing environments. They are environments where members can build bonds and move from like to respect and ultimately to trust that the environment they're in, the club they're in, and the members who they are involved with on a weekly basis will be respectful of who they are as a person. If you have ever thought about joining a Toastmasters club, think about the bonds you can build in that club. Think about the fact that you go into a trusting environment where people don't talk behind your back, where people do say and do what they mean they're going to say and do. They do follow through on their word. The Toastmasters environment is a very powerful tool, not only, as Marlene said, to build communication and leadership skills. It is also a powerful tool and environment to help build bonds of trust. Master Toastmaster.
Thank you very much, Patricia. <clears throat> you know, when it comes to Toastmasters, we can talk about it until we're blue in the face telling you, but you really have to come and experience it. <clears throat> and we would like to have you come to any of our open clubs here in the Fort Wayne area. See what you think. You don't have to join the first night. We're not going to embarrass you. We never embarrass you. We'll encourage you to participate if you want to, <laughs> but you don't have to. <clears throat> but do come and see what it's all about because your life will not be the same the next day and the next and the next. Toastmasters changes you for the better in every single instance. We now have gone to the evaluation portion of the program, <clears throat> and rather than come up here, <clears throat> if we can just do them sitting there, and maybe give like just a point, for su a suggestion, and then a point that you really liked. And let us start with, I believe our first presenter was, was Marlene, and Marlene will be evaluated by, uh, is that you, Tom? Yeah, you, you have, okay. Tell me about Marlene. All right. <clears throat> Marlene, I love the way you explained the benefits of Toastmasters. I thought the examples that you gave hit home. They were very effective. I loved your enthusiasm. I loved your word choice. I would have liked to have seen maybe a little bit of camera time on the magazines, just a little bit more on the manuals, I should say, just a little bit more to show the viewers at home, show the viewers at home what we are talking about when we are talking about competent leader, competent communicator, and the variety of advanced manuals that we have. I loved your repetition of the message because we need to hear the message more than once to bring the point across. And I thought you sold the benefits of Toastmasters beautifully. So thank you for a wonderful job. <clears throat> I couldn't agree with you more. That was an awesome presentation. Our next presenter was Tom. Uh, Tom, I believe your evaluator is Marlene. Yes, and this was the crisis management speech. He was to basically make us feel good about the company, even though apparently Scrooge was going awry. And <laughs> <laughs> I thought the humor was fantastic. And so I was trying to, to separate out how it was actually a crisis management speech as opposed to an entertaining speech. So that part of it, I had a little difficult with it, and we didn't have a chance to ask him questions afterwards. But he did actually present a very positive image of the company and the fact that I didn't know that they had Christmas off in the day after Christmas. I thought Scrooge was really bad. And so that was a point that I hadn't realized. And introducing some of the aspects of that time period about the steam engine and all that. I thought you did a very good job. I think maybe the introduction could have given us some idea of what to expect rather than just, it took me a while to get into, okay, what, where's he going with this? <laughs> Otherwise, it was an excellent speech, but I would have liked to take it even a step further and done as an entertaining speech. Thank you, Marlon. Good point. Very good point. <laughs> And of course, last but not least, Patricia will be evaluated by Tom. And Tom, you have that evaluation? I do, Mr. Wilkins. Uh, as always, Patricia did an excellent job. She obviously knew her material. She had it down pat. I think we all learned quite a bit from it, even those of us who already sold on the Toastmaster concept. The only thing I would say that might be negative, and this may be a matter of opinion, you might afterwards ask the other people, you may have overdone the gestures. Your hands were kind of in constant motion. But that may even be a matter of opinion. What I liked best, the most positive thing, was your recovery. Obviously, you had a little problem. Uh, some people would have walked out of the studio crying. We don't see a lot of <laughs> people here walking out of the studio crying. So I thought your complete and total recovery from that was just excellent. And frankly, deserves another round of applause. <laughs> If I may make an observation, since we are all part of the panel on a fairly regular basis, I think that we all know that we can recover and do so exactly, whether it's a live show or not. And speaking of, this is indeed a live show, and um, we are here if you'd like to reach us at 422-3902. In the meantime, we're going to go to our break, and then we'll come back with the parliamentary portion and something a little special this evening. So off to the break.
Thank you very much. And now for our next speaker, Stanley Lichner. Speaking in public doesn't have to be a death sentence. At Toastmasters, we can help you overcome your fears. I'd like to begin uh, tonight with a uh, little joke. Uh, this guy, he's a farmer. He says, hey, hello, hello? sorry. But ser seriously, folks. Um, uh, Speaking in public is no joke. Doc farmer says, a uh, doctor says, f chicken says. For help, call Toastmasters, the public speaking support group. <laughs> the chicken. All the education in the world won't help you get ahead in life if you can't express your ideas effectively. Every day, competition for advancement gets tougher and tougher. You need an edge. A Toastmasters Club can give you that edge. A low-cost learning experience for men and women, Toastmasters gives you the confidence to express your ideas to anyone. Get the Toastmasters edge. What future do you envision for yourself? What dreams do you have? If you want your dreams to come true, you must have confidence in yourself and your abilities. A Toastmasters Club can help you build that confidence. A low-cost learning experience for men and women, Toastmasters shows you how to express yourself clearly and effectively. Make your dreams a reality. Join a Toastmasters Club. Well, we are back with the second half, the parliamentary half of the program, and uh, we have been talking for the longest time about a major change that we were going to make, and it has been successfully completed, and I'd like to bring our president of the parliamentary club up here now to handle a main motion and maybe perhaps see what goes on. Mr. Tom Haller. Thank you very much, Mr. Wilkins. The one person that we don't really give much time to on this program is Mr. Roberts himself. I think we should summon him up. Anybody like to make a motion to that effect? Marlene Perry. Sure. I move that we actually bring Mr. Robert right here. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed say no. The motion is passed unanimously, and on those terms, we will now summon him. Mr. Roberts, come forward! Mr. Roberts, come forward! Good evening, sir. Yes, <laughs> I'm Tom Heller. Yes. And I am the ghost of Henry Robert, the author of, as you certainly well know, the book Robert's Rules of Order. We sat right here. And I am here, I have been summoned from the past, and you can see old Fort Wayne here behind us. This is about what Fort Wayne would look like when I wrote this book back in 1876. But you know, I didn't invent the wheel. All my work stands on all of those nameless, countless people in the past who began and carried forth with the ideas of leadership and also in how to conduct meetings. Starting with the Greeks, with the notion of the ballot box and the vote. 
That torch was carried forward to the Romans who added the Senate and debating in the Senate also the one man, one vote. The flame went forward then into Runnymede, Great Britain, when in the 13th century, King John signed the Magna Carta, giving us basic human rights. Among them, the right to be tried by your peers, not by the whims of the king or his minions. That torch carried forward into the Houses of Parliament in Great Britain, that great institution where we have gotten the Speaker of the House, the division of the uh, voting for and against on any kind of an issue. Also, a vote would not be a full vote unless the negative side was taken. And the pilgrims and the colonists carried those rules and those laws forward when they came here to our fair land. And those rules became what we know of as the common law here in the U.S. Then Thomas Jefferson, our third president, he wrote the rules how the people should conduct themselves in Congress, whether it's the House or the Senate, and also how to conduct their business. Later in the 18th century, a man named Luther Cushing added his remarks to a book that he wrote. And it was in 1876 that my book, Robert's Rules of Order, was finally published. So you see, everything that I put in here was a compilation of all of those things that are in the past. And from that day to this, this book has carried forth as the parliamentary authority of choice of most organizations. Since I am a ghost, I passed in 1923. The torch carried forward to 1930 when an organization called the National Association of Parliamentarians was formed to promote this book and parliamentary procedure in general. And they took the notion of having small study groups be developed to study these very rules and practice. And to that end, they allowed units to be formed. And today, I am pleased to present you with this charter for your new unit, the Bob Lyman unit. And this is for you and your officers and your members to use in the future. It's been a great joy talking to you, Tom, and I wish you and all great success in the future. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Roberts. We are very appreciative to you and all those that have gone before you. It's a privilege and honor to be the president of the newly formed Bob Lyman unit of the NAP organization. Just a few brief thoughts as to where the future may take us. We really won't know till we get there, but I envision our members who are not full members, their associate members, completing the work that's necessary so that they may become full, regular members of NAP. I also envision a few people that we have visiting us, doing their work, who are not currently a member of any parliamentary organization, so that they may join us. And also, would very much like to take this information we have to the public in general. Schools, any organization that would be interested. Previously, we have been primarily in a crisis mode. When anybody has a serious problem, they come to us. We try to help them as best we can through the use of parliamentary procedure. But it would be so much better if we could have a number of people in the Fort Wayne area become familiar with parliamentary procedure so that they could help themselves. Now, I don't know exactly what avenues will be involved, but I do know that NAP is very big on education, including education in the schools. So we will certainly be looking into this with a view to helping everyone who has any interest in shorter, better, more productive meetings. And once again, I do want to express my appreciation to Mr. Roberts for all the hard work that he put forward into bringing us into this modern, efficient, and effective age with the use of his book, Robert's Rules of Order. Thank you, one and all. Okay, welcome back. We hope, <coughs> hope that you enjoyed that. For any of you who, like myself, the old bewitched show didn't realize that Elizabeth Montgomery was both Samantha and her cousin Selena, or whatever her name was, that was our own Mr. Wilkins, who was Robert wasn't really a ghost. No seances took place. But. 
<laughs> a highly effective Robert he is. Now I'm going to resume my seat and we're going to have a round robin talking a little bit about the new club and where we hope to go from there. And excuse me, already an error. It is not a club anymore. It's a unit. <laughs> a unit. unit. Someday, hopefully I'll live long enough to get that down pat. But our, the new NAP unit here in Fort Wayne, to start us off, why don't we have Marlene Purdy tell us a little bit about what she went through to make this a reality, because she did a lot of the physical work, as well as the knowledge. Marlene? Well, I was excited about when we were considering going to National Association of Parliamentarians, because that was my initial group. When I lived in Ohio, I belonged to the uh, Toledo unit, and actually it was called the Maumee I think the Maumee Valley Unit is what it was called up there. But I always thought that the National Association of Parliamentarians had the best credibility as far as parliamentary groups because you couldn't just join and just be a member. In order to actually be a regular member of National Association of Parliamentarians, you actually have to pass a test. So you have some basic knowledge before you become part of the unit. And so that was the reason that I felt very strongly about bringing NAP to our unit here in Fort Wayne. I think another thing that was really important to each and every one of us that we needed to bring into it was the fact that any group that we belonged to, didn't matter which one, always used as their parliamentary authority Robert's Rules. So it made sense for us to be part of a national association that did indeed recognize Robert, paramount, first, top choice, top of the ladder. I, and I agree with that because the other parliamentary group that we had belonged to originally was veering away from Robert to some extent, I felt. Well, yeah, that, well, they, they did. And it, that bothered me. Right. It, it was good for them. But it wasn't, it wasn't a good fit for us. This is a much better fit. Mm -hmm. This is something that we can do. <clears throat> yeah. I, <clears throat> when I joined, it was rather confusing to me because nobody ever did anything with any other parliamentary authority except Robert's Rules Board. I think they have over 90% of the market, so to speak, and yet, you know, we were studying other stuff we were, had it available to us. Uh, this may be a little off the wall, but Patricia, is there anything that this means to you in any way, do you think? Well, my, my home club, my home Toastmasters club, American Red Cross, is abysmal when it comes to using parliamentary procedure mm -hmm. as far as their business meetings. It's well, a little bit confusing. Do, do things get done? Things do get done. We, okay. we get things done. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's what Robert says in his book, you know. If things are getting done, no matter how lumpy and chumpy it is, if it's getting done, then leave well enough alone. It's, when they want help, you know, they'll, they'll come screaming for us. No, I, I do have to support what Patricia said, though. It, <laughs> I, I was there one time attempting to educate, and it was a challenge. <laughs> Many did not seem to be at all interested in being educated. After I had presented my educational program, they did some strange things. The <laughs> speaker, the, the presiding person. Now, for reasons of health and so forth, you can't always stand at the podium. Whenever possible, or lectern, whenever possible you should, but sometimes you can. This person was a disembodied voice. I didn't literally know where it was coming from. I tell you, that was spooky. That was a lot spookier than my encounter earlier with the ghost. <laughs> then when they, like the concluding vote they took on something, they asked for a voice vote for the affirmative and a show of hands for the opposing side. That was after I had spent a fair amount of time training. <laughs> so apparently I was not a very effective trainer. But anyway, we digress. We, as parliamentarians, want to help you. We really mm -hmm. do. We want to have you, you know, have good, effective meetings, and we're willing for free to assist you with that. Okay. And I will return control to Mr. Wilkins, because we are essentially out of time. Yeah, we are running out of time. I do want to remind the audience out there that if you want to visit a Toastmaster club, go to toastmasters.org, and you can find one. 
Also, there are just clubs everywhere in Fort Wayne, morning, noon, and night. And the parliamentary club, the one we've been talking about right now, the parliamentary unit, the Bob Lyman unit, is meets once a month here in the library, third Mondays in the Globe Room from 6.30 to 8. And we do practice sessions, we have study groups, uh, we break away for exams, and uh, we also try to do as much outreach as possible, and that would include helping others with their bylaws, with their rules, with suggestions. And we're going to try to get some displays up in the library starting in January and the first of the year to, to recognize our new group. <clears throat> I want to say some thank yous. I want to especially thank Robert Boyd, Bobby Baby Boyd, for being here and helping out with the audio and the technical part of that uh, video that you saw earlier. Also, we have Dennis Osborne, who we cannot live without. And Dennis knows what's going on and how to do it. Our uh, director tonight is Otto Boucher, and of course, Access Fort Wayne and the Allen County Public Library are all we're indebted to for allowing us this wonderful chance once a month. And I'd like to thank my guests tonight, Mr. Tom. Thank you so much for being here and getting here so early. <clears throat> do you have a final thought for anyone? Uh, <clears throat> find yourself a Toastmaster Club, check in on the parliamentarians, and this time of year, most of all, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Okay, thank you, Tom. Marlene, dear? I forgot when I was giving my speech to mention one of the benefits of joining Toastmasters is the monthly magazine that comes out. It's called the Toastmaster Magazine, and it has lots of really good articles in it. In fact, this particular one oh, had on cross-cultural communication. No, I'll leave it back up there again. And so... Turn it back up around. Okay. There you go. There. There we go. The Toastmaster magazine, this particular issue talked about cross-cultural communication and how you can get in trouble if you're not familiar with some of the other... Good point. Very yes, good so, point. Anyway. <laughs> Excellent magazine. Get it once a month. Okay. Thank you, Marlene. And Patricia, dear, do you have any thoughts? I do. The American Red Cross Toastmasters Club is having their Christmas open house next Tuesday, December 9th. At noon, we meet at the Red Cross building at 1212 East California Road. We are a club that is open to the public. I welcome anyone to join us, especially for our open house, but for any of our meetings, because... We love having guests, and we would love to see you join as a member. Okay. Thank you, Patricia. And, of course, I'm Dave Wilkins, and I would invite you to join either the Anthony Wayne Toastmasters, the uh, Barrett Field Toastmasters, meeting on the south side. It has great food at Penguin Point, and also the Advanced Communicators meeting once a month here in the library. Find out any of those clubs. They will all be of great service to you. And until next month, may you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And God bless us, everyone, as Tiny Tim would say.